As we all know, Evelyn's mom, Megan, was recently arrested on one count of false reporting, and she's currently being held on a $25,000 bond. Uh, if you guys want some background on this situation, feel free to check out some of my other videos. Right now, I just kind of wanted to give you the current happenings on this investigation. So, the sheriff's office has expressed multiple times now that Megan's statements are misleading, and at today's press conference, it was said that it's not even an understatement to say that her story changes every single time they talk to her, every single time. Uh, it's just so disturbing to say the least. I guess one positive thing about that is, you know, uh, she's not just a liar, she seems like a bad liar, and that can be such a good thing. So, law enforcement spent most of earlier today searching a pond in Trap Hill, North Carolina for this sweet little girl. Uh, ultimately, the search did come up inconclusive, but we've also had a few really interesting interviews kind of surface while we were all watching and waiting. Uh, this first interview I'll show you guys is the grandmother of William McLeod, who is Megan's mother's boyfriend. Her property is pretty much right next to this pond that was being searched, so I'm sure I'm sure law enforcement is gathering whatever information they can from her. I just think what she had to say was, you know, interesting and might shed some light on on the situation. Um, in any case, let's go ahead and watch that now. We could see investigators with the Wilkes County Sheriff's Office, along with firefighters from Cheryl's Ford, around the pond today is located right next to Mary McLeod's home. Her grandson dates the grandmother of 15-month-old Evelyn Boswell. She told me the two showed up at her home in Trap Hill asking for money to get out of North Carolina, but what caught her attention was that her grandson was wet and the story he told her explaining why. That he'd been at the motel, at Lowe's Motel in Wilkesboro, and there'd been a pipe burst. And he got his feet wet, and somebody stole his money, and he needed money to get back to Bristol. The two never got out of North Carolina after being arrested less than a mile away in a stolen vehicle authorities believe may be connected to the case. The baby girl's mother, who is also now in custody, says her mother was the last person she saw with Evelyn in late December. Now, the missing girl's mother is accused of giving investigators a number of conflicting statements about her daughter's disappearance, along with saying she hadn't seen the 15-month-old since late December. We asked Mary McLeod if she thought her grandson could have any involvement in baby Evelyn's disappearance. He's devious enough. His record from youth up, he's been devious enough to be involved in something. So she doesn't seem to have much faith that her grandson William has no involvement, clearly. Uh, that being said, the truth of everything is, you know, yet to be seen. Uh, this next interview, reporters were talking to David Jones, who is the grandfather of Megan and great-grandfather of Evelyn. Uh, he shares a few really interesting things with us, including the alarming account um, of Megan and her mother, Angela, coming over every single day for two weeks while Angela was living with them. Uh, this is all during that time that Angela supposedly had taken the baby from Megan so to say it raises a few flags is is an understatement. Uh, he feels like whatever happened to his great granddaughter, Megan, will be at the bottom of it. Uh, he also gives his version of events regarding Hunter giving that BMW to Angela. Uh, while you listen to this, guys, just try and take note of the timeline that's happening here. Here are a few segments of my conversation with David Jones. Again, he's the great-grandfather of Evelyn May Boswell. They're accusing her of stealing that car. The day they gave it to her, they were sitting in my living room. Megan come driving it up into my yard, and her boyfriend following her, and her boyfriend sat right there and said, I'm giving that car to Angel. And you're saying now that you, you witnessed this? Yes, we did, because it happened in our home. Gotcha. So you're saying that Megan had the car, the BMW. Yeah, she drove it here to give to my daughter. And now they're saying she stole it. How do you steal something somebody gives to you? Gotcha. Yeah. And so you were here and you personally saw... Personally. Gotcha. They, they pulled the car up in the yard shut it off it wouldn't start they asked me to come out and see if i could help them get it started which i did and they uh 
Hunter. Yeah. Told my daughter, said in a couple of days we'll go get the title put in your name. And is Hunter the boyfriend of yeah, Megan? He's also lying. Uh, there, and Megan said that she was buying it for my daughter. That's a, a blatant lie. She doesn't have money to buy a set and hen, much less a car. Hmm. Hunter gave that car to my daughter. Watch but, it. Yeah. Uh, and so, do you know about when this happened, when the car was given to to Angela? It was uh, not, let's say, Sunday before last, I think. Okay. Yeah. So, about a, a little over a, a week ago. A ago, maybe. Gotcha. But anyway, uh, they pulled it right up in my driveway and shut it off, and they'd been having trouble with the battery, Hunter said. And But after that, for some reason, it began starting okay but uh he gave the car to her yeah and so you're saying hunter the boyfriend of megan right. gave you saw him give the car exactly. to um i i mean it's not hearsay yeah I saw it. yeah so you saw him give the car to angela like give her the keys the um keys and uh, told her they would go get the title in a couple of days Gotcha. So you, her name. so you're hearing that, you know, she, the reason I got your address is because it was from the charging papers from, um, when she was, she was in court, she appeared in court via video this morning for well, the theft charge. she was staying here, obviously, this, a lot of this is her stuff here. This but is Angela's stuff? She stayed here a couple of weeks, but then she left. You're saying Angela? Yeah. Okay. And Megan didn't live here or live with you? God, no. They're going to, I mean, when they get to the bottom of it, Megan Boswell will be, whatever's happened to that child, that's where the source is. And did you ever, I'm sorry, I don't want to take too much of your time, but did you ever meet Evelyn and did, were you close with, because she's your we, great, she's your great granddaughter, right? But she never brought us, brought her to, the last time we saw Evelyn was about a week before Thanksgiving. Megan brought her here for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And then Megan would come back and uh, my wife would say, why don't you bring Evelyn, let us see her. So that was when she was on the story that Ethan had her. Okay. The one that's in the service. So she said that Ethan had her daughter. Mm -hmm. And this was about when? Well, like I said, the last time we saw her was about a week before Thanksgiving. Okay. And, but Megan, if my daughter had taken Evelyn, the two weeks that my daughter stayed here, Megan was here every day with a hunter. They were hanging with my daughter every day for two weeks. Yeah. Why would you hang with somebody that took your child? So you're saying earlier this month, when the car exchange happened, um, Angela was living with you all yep. for about two weeks. Yep. And during that two-week period, you're saying that Megan and her boyfriend, Hunter, came over here about every day, every day. during those two weeks. Sometimes twice. And so what you're saying is if Angela had taken Evelyn, why would she hang she out with her? Hanging with her every day. Does that make sense to you? You know, I hear your question. And have you been have you been interviewed by police at all about this or what the the detectives have been here several times. Okay. And WCYB's been here, but I'm not gonna do an interview with them. Okay. Because they tend to twist around what you say. And I'm uh, for my daughter's good, I need to keep clear in my mind what happened that we know about, which is not much, mm. except about the car mostly, mm. and when we last saw Evelyn. And again, just to make sure I'm correct on what you're telling me, because I, I want to make sure we're accurate too, yeah. um, you're saying that you last saw Evelyn mm -hmm. before Thanksgiving, before so in November. Yeah. And the other thing is that earlier this month, there was about a two week period where you said Angela was living with you. Yes. And during that those two weeks, um, right. you're saying Megan and her boyfriend Hunter came here. Every day for that two-week period. Okay. Every day. And 
I mean, I've been wanting to tell somebody this. I'm not going to do an interview on TV. They might as well stay away from here. They've been here two or three times. But I will tell you what, what I know. But I just we just don't know a lot except Megan keeps changing her story about where the child is. Yeah. And are you... And so, Angela, when, before she lived with you, do you know about when she stopped living with you? Uh, let's see, it wasn't this, uh, it was on a Tuesday, actually, uh, two weeks ago. But anyway, she came in, she said, Dan, I'm going to a motel, and I said, well, where are you going? But she didn't tell me. And that was the last we actually heard from her until all this started going about. Gotcha. And then I saw on TV her car and her tag number, and they were looking for her. Yeah. And I did try to contact her then, and I couldn't get a hold of her. So. Gotcha. And do you do you have any just like gut feeling about what what's happened or where Evelyn might might be or what happened? It, not really. I mean, I do know Megan knows where the child is, gotcha. and it's not anywhere that concerned my daughter. I can guarantee you that. But she's changed her story a half a dozen times. And has that been not just in? I know she's done a few TV interviews. Yeah. Um, but I mean, has she been talking with you and your family members about it? She's has not going to talk to me. She, yeah. She, I'm, She's not allowed here, so, uh, but she wouldn't do that anyway. I mean, try to contact us knowing what she's done. She'll do anything she can do to avert the attention away from her, and that's what she's doing. Gotcha, and um, just real briefly, like, you know, what, what do you, Hope are the next steps in all of this. I know there's a lot of attention on your family and, and on the search she for needs Evelyn. To be arrested. You think Megan does? Yes. Mm-hmm. And some way or another, the truth brought out. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's just the way it's looking, it's not going to end well. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But Megan knows the truth. Oh. She's good at what she's doing. Yeah. What you did personally witness, though, again, was Evelyn here before Thanksgiving. Yep. You saw, um, you know, Megan and her boyfriend coming here to visit with Angela. Yeah, and the day they gave my daughter the car, Megan was driving it. She pulled up in her yard, and her boyfriend was following her. And uh, <clears throat> he sat right here in my living room. Mm-hmm and said, I'm giving the car to uh, Angel, and that we're going to go in a couple of days and get the tax for it in her name. Was there a reason they were giving the car to, to Angela? He at first said he was going to give her a pickup truck. And then he said, he said, well, I've got a car I can give her that would better suit her to take her kids around to doctors and here and wherever she needed to go. Yeah. And and I guess lastly, um, you know, you, I guess recently you haven't seen Megan or you would no, you don't even and don't want yeah. to see her. Gotcha. Um, because she's caused this whole family, not only my side but the Boswell side, so much grief about this that. It, nothing like this has ever happened in our family before. Yeah. And uh, I just think that when they do find out the truth, Megan will be at the bottom. There is more to that interview, but they kind of just keep going over and over the same thing um, again and again. Uh, regardless, it's pretty clear that David Jones is kind of taking up for his daughter, Angela, and really thinks Megan is the one behind all of this. I do think it's interesting, though, all of what he has to say about Hunter. Um, I try to keep an open mind and remind myself that this is only one side of it all and one very small piece to a very large puzzle. So after taking all of this in today, 
you know, my, my heart really goes out to all of the innocent people surrounding this nightmare. And I hope as every day goes past that authorities are closing in on getting the truth and that this can all come to an end soon. It just feels like everything is moving really quickly lately, and I just have to applaud all of the efforts going in to the search for Evelyn. If anyone out there has any factual information that could lead to finding Evelyn, uh, please don't hesitate to call the tip line. If you're on the fence about spilling the beans, just keep it in mind that there is a reward available. I believe it's over $58,000 now. Uh, for anyone with any solid information, you know, please don't tie up resources with rumors and hunches. It's such a sad fact that some uh, people need reminded of that, but that is the case. Uh, as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for listening and hope you enjoyed watching.